Robert, can you talk a little bit about the best way to take it? You, we've talked about a number of different forms that sure. silver comes in, and what's the best way to, to, to get it into our system? Yeah, for and I mentioned the sublingual because it's a systemic absorption via the mucosa here. Okay. Now, because the particles are so small in the hydrosol, the bioactive form that I utilize, you don't have any gut ecology disruption. So it's a great thing to mm -hmm. ask because what a, you know, we know that silver interacts with microbes and, and bacteria. So if you were to chug a lug silver a lot, or take the wrong form that doesn't absorb rapidly, it'll tra mm -hmm. travel and transit down to, through your gastrointestinal system and it will disrupt your good gut ecology. We don't want mm -hmm. that, we don't need that. In fact, the opposite. So doing it this way with this form, you never worry about disrupting. So a teaspoon is a simple dose for an adult, whereas less for a child. However, if you're dealing with specific areas of the body, sinus infections, allergies, inflammation, tissue sensitivity, mm -hmm. you can deliver it directly into the sinuses. I mentioned an eye mm -hmm. issue. My, my daughter, when she was, what, six, seven, eight months old, she had a, a, an eye infection, like mm -hmm. a, a conjunctivitis, a pink eye. Mm -hmm. And so we dropped it in there. It was done in about two days. Okay. I could do it faster now because it was early on as I was learning. I was like, oh, how often should I do it? Mm -hmm. Completely safe. Knocked it out. Now, parents know about this with pink eye. They could give the antibiotic ointment. It could be three weeks later and they still have pink mm -hmm. eye. So this is very serious. Ear infection, you drop it in the ear. The point is get it where it needs to go. Doctors talk about the point of foci. Where is the problem? Mm -hmm. Get it there. So it's a, there's an unlimited array. Of course, in the dietary supplement industry, you know, they're limited so by the labeling laws. Mm -hmm. They can't tell you all the things that we can talk about, frankly, about these things. And it's an important distinction to make because people are scared. They mm -hmm. need to know this information so that they have the tools. And look, modern medicine, antibiotics, it'll be there in some form or another, but it shouldn't be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Point is where it's appropriate. Now, if you can eradicate these things before ever needing it, isn't that a good thing? Now, in terms of respiratory ailments, this is another scary thing, whether it be asthma, bronchitis, or the secondary effects of flu. When they talk about the influenza virus, it's not the virus that's typically killing people. It's mm -hmm. the secondary complications, bacterial infections, pneumonia. I take that silver hydrosol and I put it in a nebulizer mm. and inhale it directly into the lungs. And it is extraordinary what happens. You've got it to the area that is in need. And that's the critical thing here, getting it where it needs to go. You know, if you have something topically, and I've done this with a gel, combining it with a homeopathic mm -hmm. form of silver called Argenta Metallicum, you now have the ability to eradicate the need for petrochemical topical agents like the Neosporin that is ubiquitous sure. in the West. And we can address, like in burn care centers around the world, what do they use as their medicine for third degree burn and wound care? A silver-based drug known as Silvadine or silver sulfadiazine. Mm. That's a crude form of silver compared to what we're discussing right now. But if they use it in that form, my goodness, what if you freed up only the silver to do what it can do? You will see acceleration of wounds and healing, tissue that cannot be healed like diabetic ulcerations that never heal. You'll eradicate mm -hmm. the infections and you'll accelerate tissue regrowth because it stimulates de-differentiation and re-differentiation of stem cells at the site of infection, inflammation, and injury. This goes back to the work of Dr. Robert Becker, those of you who have read that. The, the Body Electric, fascinating mm. book of this orthopedist who was a true scientist and discovered a lot of these things. Now the technology has gotten better. We understand even more about these pathways. And when you talk about healing, you talk about healing without scarring. Mm. I mean, this is already peer reviewed and, and confirmed. And one last thing I would say before, if we need to move mm -hmm. to another subject, the gastrointestinal diseases, I, I lecture on this extensively now because that was a big part of my problem. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, irritable bowel syndrome, diverticulitis, colitis, Crohn's disease, leaky gut, mm. and even candida yeast out overgrowth. All of these have a relation to, let's say, what the properties of silver are in that we can heal tissue. If we can heal epithelial tissue on the skin here, there's epithelial tissue in the lining of the gut, which is damaged by vaccination, damaged by antibiotics, damaged by additives, preservatives, colorings, flavorings, fungicides, pesticides, herbicides, and we're exposed to that constantly. So how do we heal the tissue that is chronically inflamed? Of course, the doctors give you more antibiotics until that doesn't work. The gastroenterologist says, here, here's some prednisone. Let's try that, which is an immunosuppressant drug. It reduces inflammation, but at a very high cost to the liver as well. Mm -hmm. And when that stops working, they send you to the colorectal surgeon and they start removing just pieces. Yeah, just take it out. And people, more and more people, you want to invest in a, in a growth industry, colostomy bags. And it's a horrible thing to say, but more and more people are being subjected to this brutal surgery. I wanted to heal. Now, it took me a couple of years with homeopathic medicine, change in diet to, to correct a lot of my gastrointestinal issues. 
knowing what I know today, because I only learned of this many years later, I can accelerate that two-year window sometimes to as little as two months because of the silver properties. I drive the silver into the gut with aloe vera juice on a one-to-one -one ratio. So an adult, rather than taking a teaspoon, may take two tablespoons with two tablespoons of the aloe vera to carry it. Aloe has a great property as well, many great properties, but in this case it carries the silver past the stomach into the gut where it begins mm -hmm. to heal tissue, reduce inflammation, eradicate microbial overgrowth or dysbiosis, and then of course we see the villi recovering as well, the leaky gut where you have these spaces now come together because the healing, the inflammation is gone, and now you have a complete new terrain whereas you put the probiotics in that you used to put in and they would just go right through because they couldn't colonize, now they can colonize. So on this protocol, which is quite fascinating how rapidly you can see recovery, is that one to two tablespoons of the silver hydrosol and the aloe together three times a day prior to meals, for, you know, so the stomach's largely empty, driving through the gastrointestinal tract, probiotics and prebiotics at night, because you are cleansing the gut on purpose during the day. Replenish mm -hmm. at night. After a couple of weeks, if it's a minor issue, no problem. You then probiotic more during the day as well to replenish, and now you have real colonization or in the case of the serious gastrointestinal chronic diseases, you might go four, six, or eight weeks, but compare that to doing the surgery, mm -hmm. right? You can use L-glutamine as well, which is excellent. People already know about that, mm -hmm. but the silver is really the missing element in healing tissue. Rapid regeneration, and I, I apologize, I, it just comes to me one more thing to tell you. I hope you it's don't mind. Right. Neurological health. Oh, right? We were all okay. told that metals are bad for the mm -hmm. nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. And it's true. Most of them are. Aluminum, mercury, cadmium. Cadmium, mm -hmm. of course, depletes selenium. That's a big problem of its own. But in this case, there are two receptor sites that have been identified on neural tissue, on the myelin sheath of the nerve cell. Why is that important? Well, if the neural uh, tissue is damaged, as in degenerative neurological degradation type diseases, MS, Alzheimer's, other things mm -hmm. may be related. Many of them are. Uh, it's very difficult for uh, adult mammals to regenerate neural tissue. Silver stimulates, as I said, regeneration of tissue. That's just one of its properties. Ask the creator why. It just is. And of course, it's a conductive metal. If we, had receptor, if we have receptor sites for something, it means we need it. We don't need a lot. I'm not saying we need to you know, mm -hmm. introduce more than we need, but the point is we need subtle amounts that help to regenerate. And there are uh, anecdotal cases that I know personally, and based on the science that I'm seeing here, it makes sense that we're seeing some regeneration of myelin, we're seeing reduction, sometimes reversal of MS type symptoms. And this is high dose administration. Some physicians are actually utilizing intravenous protocols. Mm. Very controversial, but non-toxic. People aren't turning blue from it if they utilize the right form. And we're seeing miraculous recoveries. And because it carries a lot of oxygen in with it, Cancer is not a big fan of silver either. Although I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's the sole thing I would use for any cancer therapy, but as an adjunct, it was another, another powerful uh, positive interaction with the body, with, let's say, counteracting these diseases of degradation.